The broadcast ministry of Christ Way Fellowship brings you victory for today. Exalting the Savior, evangelizing the seeker, and equipping the saint. Committed to the principle that you can have victory today and every day through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And now here's your host, Pastor Wayne Duncan. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Victory for Today. Thank you for tuning in. I've got some things I want to share with you right up front before we get into our Bible study. But go ahead and get your Bible and be ready. Go to Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to be studying again. And that passage about the armor of God or what to wear to the war. <laughs> but I want to just share some great news with you. And that news is this. Uh, many of you listen to this broadcast by radio, and uh, we are expanding the radio audience that we're seeking to minister to, and we're picking up Detroit, Michigan, and also Phoenix, Arizona. As a matter of fact, uh, this may be for some of you in those two cities or in those surrounding areas, uh, this may be the first time that you've heard us here on Victory for Today. And, and I, if, if you're new to this broadcast, I just want to say welcome to you. And we're going to be studying God's Word on this program every week. It's a weekly program. We're on for half an hour, and we study about topics that are vital to us in our Christian lives. And we go straight to the Word of God, and that's where our source is. We, we study the Word together. We bring out the all the historical background, the word studies, all the things that we need to help us to really get a grasp on what the Word of God is teaching us on various topics or as we go through books of the Bible, which we do very often. Right now, we're studying about spiritual warfare, and we're kind of zeroed in or grounded in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, about the whole armor of God. And uh, also a thing that armor we do of God. is, and we've been going through the series about the enemies that face the Christian, the world, that's this world system that is organized apart from and against God. People say, if God's such a good God, why is the world in the mess it's in? Well, the world is in the mess that it's in because it is organized apart from God and against God. Just look at what goes on right here in our country and all the ways that uh, different people are trying to turn our country away from the knowledge of God and following after His ways. Uh, also, one of our enemies is the flesh. That is that old nature that we were born with that is rendered inoperative when we come to Christ and are born again by the grace of God and are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. And we receive that new nature that we can walk in. And then there's the arch enemy and the one that can orchestrate or general these other forces and his wiles and schemes against us. And that is Satan the devil. Satan the devil. And so we've been looking at ways that we can put on this armor of God and how these apply to our Christian lives so that we can be victorious, as the program is entitled, Victorious, Victory for Today and Every Day. And we can do this through the might of God's power. And so as we look here at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, we have worked through a number of these verses. And uh, by the way, if you're new to the broadcast, go to that website and go to Sermon Archives and you can catch up. There's about, oh, I'd say probably a hundred different sermons we, on there. We uh, talked last week about this matter of the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness, that belt of truth. And the old uh, Roman soldiers had a, a leather belt they wore around their waist to kind of cinch up that tunic that they wore and also to hang other implements like their sword and other things uh, held onto that or were fastened onto that belt. 
And so if you were in the service, remember that cartridge belt that we used to hang our canteen and our sidearm and all that stuff on there. <laughs> those those uh, uh, clips of ammunition that we used to put in there. I'm talking about the old core now. I'm talking about way back there. So I don't know. They're, they're wearing all kinds of different, using different kind of weapons. I was a M1 Marine. So that's what I, I was uh, trained on. Uh, so, you know, they've got this, this uh, belt of truth or truthfulness or we might say this belt of integrity that cinches everything up for us and then there's that breastplate of righteousness and we're told in the scriptures to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and so these are garments these are part of that armor that we put on what to wear to the war the belt of truth and then the breastplate of righteousness and today, we're going to be looking at this next part of the armor, and uh, that is this matter of the feet. Now look at verse 15. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So I'm going to just use that single verse today, and we'll talk about that. I'm going to lay the scriptures over here aside, and I'm going to look at some notes here that I have made for this broadcast. Uh, the, uh, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I uh, termed this the old gospel shoes. Uh, and you know what? These, this is so important when we start to think about the need for having proper foot gear when we are in combat, when we're in this spiritual warfare. I, I got to th thinking about yeah, when you go to the mall, my goodness, every other store at the mall is a shoe store. And you go into those shoe stores and they've got all kinds of different shoes in there. And, uh, and I got to thinking about, my goodness, you know, we could, we could preach for two months <laughs> just on this single verse thinking about the different kind of shoes that there are. <laughs> Here's what I'm getting at. You go into that shoe store and what do you find? You find shoes for walking. You find walking shoes. Now in the scriptures we're told to walk in newness of life. We're told to walk in the spirit, not fulfill the deeds of the flesh. We're told to walk honestly, not in disrepute. We're told to walk by faith and not by sight. We're told to walk in good works and we're also taught to walk worthily, to walk in a worthy manner, worthy of the one that has called us. Now, I just, I just picked out a few uh, different scriptures having to do with this matter of our walk. And when the scriptures speak about walk, <clears throat> it's speaking, unless it's describing an activity that's going on right there, uh, it's, it's speaking about our life how we live our life. So we're to live in newness of life. We're to live in the Spirit. We're to live honestly. We're to live by faith, not by sight. We're to live in good works. We're to live in a worthy manner. And so it's so important we think about this matter of our walk. So we've got walking shoes. And then we've got running shoes. <laughs> Everybody's got running shoes nowadays. You know, everybody's... I got these uh, different brands. I won't start naming brands because I'll leave something out, but all kinds of running shoes today. Well, when we turn to the scriptures, here again, we find references to running. And we're told to run to win. That is to say, uh, the scripture goes on to explain there the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul says that we're to run as in a race. And in a race, only one gets the prize. But we're to run in that race like we're really after the prize. And may I see, dear friends, that the prize that we have and, and the prize that's already been won for us by Jesus Christ, by His shed blood, is salvation. But we're not running to get salvation. We're running in our faith now. We're running the race to, to show that the gospel has impacted our lives. We're to run with patience. Run our race with patience. It requires patience in the Christian life. You know, I, I, I used to say this to our folks that, 
There's no such thing as a holy zap. <laughs> we, <laughs> you, don't, you don't just get a holy zap and all of a sudden you're a, a spiritual person. Uh, no, we gain these things step by step. Now, we're talking about running, but we gain these things step by step as we grow in the Spirit, as we grow in our Christian faith, as we grow in our walk with Christ. But we're to run with patience. It takes patience to, to, to allow all the things that God is doing in our lives to have the effect that He wants them to have so that we're the kind of people that God wants us to be. You see, when we talk about having victory, we're not talking about just salvation. Oh, that's a powerful thing. How wonderful it is to know that our sins are forgiven and we're in a right relationship with God. And if we were to die this very moment, that we would go to be with Him and be with Him forever. That's a wonderful thing. But you know what? Our salvation doesn't just cover our sins past present and future, but it also covers the, the matter of the power of sin that seeks to dominate our lives. And so that we can live out our lives here, in this time, in this life, and not be controlled by the power of sin through the world, the flesh, or even Satan, the devil himself. And so we're to walk in the, this matter way. We're to uh, uh, walk in this worthy way. We're to uh, run with patience. Uh, the scripture says we're to run not in vain. So the caution there is that we run in our faith. We're running along and then we come to something that, that upsets us, that turns us upside down. And the next thing you know, our faith, all that we built up just seems to be shattered before our eyes. So be careful about that. Also, we're told, here's, here's something else kind of like running. We're told to flee fornication, to flee idolatry to flee the love of money, which is the root of all evil, not money, but the love of it. We're to flee youthful lusts. And so there's all these different respects that we could talk about shoes. But what we're talking about here in this particular passage, what's spoken of here is standing. So these are shoes. These are combat boots. These are for standing. These are for standing. And as we think about this, let, let's just uh, uh, kind of grab on to something that to maybe some of you were, uh, will be reminded of. These boots are made for standing. <laughs> and so when we put on these old gospel boots, my dear friend, we are putting them on so that we may stand. And the Roman soldiers had special kind of shoes that they wore in combat. The, the Roman legions, the Roman uh, tactics, uh, were, they, they, were, they were so uh, far ahead of themselves. And one of the reasons that the Roman Empire was able to grow the way it did was because of their terrific uh, army and the way they, uh, they, their strategies and their equipment. And part of that included this matter of their foot gear. And one of the things that they used, one of their main tactical uh, formations was the phalanx. And this was when the soldiers would, would gather in a certain formation, sometimes like a, like a spearhead. They would gather in that formation and they would have a certain stand that they would take when they were under attack or even when they were advancing. Now, we're, we're looking at this aspect here of the armor of God as being able to stand. So this is a defensive posture that we're in right now. And they would take this stand with these special boots that they had, these special shoes that they had that were made to grip the earth, to grip the ground. Uh, you, you can't do any good in hand-to-hand -hand combat if you're slipping and sliding all over the terrain out there. You've got to be able to dig in and stand firm. And they had shoes that were specially designed for that. Soles on those shoes were specially designed so that they could, could take a grip. And so what they would do is they would stand... Uh, their left foot would be a little bit forward of the right foot. The right feet, foot would be back and turned kind of at about a 90 degree angle. That left foot would be pointed forward. Also on their left arm, that would be where their shield was. We'll talk about the shield of faith next time. And if you, if you want to get kind of a modern day uh, picture of that, think about the stand that a boxer takes. You know, he's standing with that 
left, that left jab always going out. He's standing there with that left and the right cocked back there for those, uh, those uh, deadly blows that he can deliver. And he's standing in a way that, that he can take blows too. So the Roman soldier, they were set for battle. And, and this is what the Apostle Paul is speaking of here as the Holy Spirit leads him in his thoughts. And he puts this down to, to help us to understand that, dear ones, we need to be able to stand fast against the enemy. You know, there's nothing more the devil likes to do than just knock a Christian off his feet. Have you ever just been knocked off your feet by some circumstance in your life? By some terrible tragedy that takes place in your life? Have you ever just been knocked off your feet? Just knocked, just knocked plumb off your feet. You know, I, I'm so grateful to God that we get telephone calls from people. They call in, you know, asking for us to send the the Bible to them, the, the study guide to them. Uh, I had a, a lady call just a few weeks ago from Gretna, Louisiana, down around the New Orleans area. And I'm, I'm not going to mention her name. I don't want to uh, get, uh, you know, get into details or anything. But I just want to tell you the general story that is her life. And uh, here she was, uh, a mother of a 19-year-old boy, a good boy, not a member of a gang or anything, not involved in drugs or gangs or anything like that, but her son was murdered. And so that mother was just, you, you can see how something like that would just sweep you off your feet, knock you off your feet. And that was Satan the devil that did that. And this dear mother was, as any of us would be, she was just so so struck hard by that blow that Satan delivered and knocked off her feet just like... But you know what? She was so grounded in the truth of the gospel that that mother, she got her footing back. And I will tell you what she does now. Now, based on what she's been through, she can speak to people who go through that same kind of thing and even uh, uses that as a ministry to reach out to families where their children or their loved ones are taken like that. And she even goes and speaks at funerals and appeals to young people and talks about these things. You know what, what Satan meant for evil, God turned into something good. Now, dear friends, I, I use that dear woman's story, her life experience to challenge myself and to challenge you. Because look, Satan wants to knock us off our feet to get us away from what we really believe, to get us away from our faith. And, and we, we can either fall for that and stay flat on your back and let him hack you to pieces, or we can get our footing, hold fast, stand fast, and fight back against the enemy and allow God to use what has happened to us for good. You know, the scriptures doesn't say doesn't say that all things are good, but it says that God uses all things for the good of those that love God and are called according to His purpose. And so even though we may go through some things that are heartbreaking and just would knock us off our feet, dear one, listen, stand fast. I'm not saying ignore the way you feel, ignore the, the, the grief that comes upon you, but I'm saying that at, at bottom line, okay, bottom line, stand fast. Stand fast against the enemy. The scriptures say that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Now let's try in the few minutes that we have left to try to just cover three aspects of this, this statement here. First of all, notice it's preparation. He says, having your feet shod with the preparation. The preparation. Let's talk about that for a moment. Standing requires preparation. How do we prepare? We prepare in the Spirit of God. This whole passage that we're studying here has to do with us putting on the armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And we're, it goes on to say that we're to stand in the power of His might. And so our preparedness means that we are grounding ourselves in the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a preparation 
And then it says not only it's a preparation, but it's a preparation of the gospel. The gospel. Now, most of you know what gospel means, but let me just remind us, and let me also, for the benefit of those who don't really know what that word means, let's talk about it for a minute. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> gospel means good news. It means good news. It means good news. The gospel is not bad news. The gospel is good news. The bad news is that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the good news that is this, that God, by His mercy, by His grace, has made a way for us to come to salvation and to live above sin in our lives and to have heaven as our home. The gospel is the good news. Uh, if you remember, if you were tuned in last week, I said one of the greatest days of my life was the day that I, uh, it finally dawned on me that God was not against me, that God was for me. And my dear friend, He's not just for me, He's for you too. See, God loves you and He has a wonderful plan for your life. The gospel is good news. The bad news is that we're in confusion about our purpose. The bad news is that we're in conflict with our Creator. The good news is that Jesus Christ, through His life, death, and resurrection, brings us into that life. And so as we think about this matter, we're talking about the preparation of the gospel of what? Of peace. Of peace. And the word that's used there, in the New Testament, most generally, there's a word for peace that means just shut up and be quiet. <laughs> that would be the word mama would use sometimes, I guess, to in the Greek home. But this is the word irony. That word irony. Uh, it's it's a, a word that would correspond with the Hebrew word shalom. We're to stand in the gospel, the good news of shalom, the, of peace. And that's such a wonderful, wonderful word. Sometimes when I... I send out an email, I'll begin it by saying, Shalom, everybody. I've thought, I, I may start greeting everyone on this program that way. Shalom, everyone. Because that, we are standing in the gospel of shalom, the gospel of peace. Now that means peace, of course, but it means more than just the absence of conflict. It means a completeness. It means welfare. It means health. It means uh, our well-being. It means our satisfaction. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Look it up over in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Verse 6, verse 9. And, and uh, you'll see he's called the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Shalom. Look that up for yourself. And so here's what we're to do, dear friends. As we put on this whole armor of God, we put on that belt of truth, that belt of integrity, that belt of truthfulness, of honesty. Satan can't can't come against us. We got that belt on. Jesus is our truth. The Word of God is truth. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Him. And then the practical righteousness of us living out the, the commands of God, the ways of God in our lives. Listen, God didn't save us, Christian friends, so that we can go on living the same old rotten way that we lived before we got saved. He saves us so that we can live a new way, a, a way of power and a way of righteousness. And now we're putting on those combat boots, <laughs> those good old gospel shoes, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen and amen. Now you phone in if you'd like to get a copy of the Word of God, if you'd like to get this New King James Version. I'll send that to you and also the beginning steps. And I'll also include some other little goodies in those envelopes too. Some tracks and things that you can use uh, for your own edification and also in your own personal ministry. And I hope this has been helpful today. Once again, those of you that are listening for the first time, those in Detroit, those in Phoenix, welcome to you. And I just trust you're going to tune back in next week. Now... This is Wayne Duncan saying, the good Lord willing, and the saints don't rise. I'll see you right here next week on Victory for Today.